Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be covering River Rest. This is a 6 berth model and it's got a permanent bed on the rear. So this is going to be a quick reference guide. So we'll start on the outside. This is where your gas bottle is located. So to access the gas bottle you want that key there. Put it in there like so and you can open that bottle. We'll open it now because I'm going to run you through on the interior systems. Next to that over here is the shutter valves again use that same key so you've got two shutter valves there if they're in the horizontal position they open one for the gas hot water heater and the other for the gas hob here at the bottom is your exhaust vent for the diesel heater this is where you plug into 240 volts with the plug i'll show you that when we're inside so that just slots in there like so i'm going to use you want to lift this up like so, slot that in there like so, and just push it in. Normally, when you're at a campsite, you'll have a plug like this. Just lift that up like so, and plug it in. And that automatically starts charging the battery, and you can use your microwave and all the 240 points. This is your hot water heater over here. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that you could just run your hand up and down here. Feel for warm air. Feel warm air coming out, you know it's on over here. Your grey water is emptied down there. This is where you dump your grey water. So again, using that same key. That's where your grey water hose is located. Some of them come with the hose attached to it already. So you just pull it out pull this out put it in the proper dump station and then all you do is just twist turn this and just pull it that'll instantly release it some other models will actually have a separate valve here where you connect the hose up this one's a bit different always use the authorized dump station to empty your gray and toilet cassette this is the waste hose connection you always have to keep this cap on at all times. So if we undo this cap, that's where you connect up your waste hose and then you go to an authorized dump station and you can empty up the waste tank. Toilet is located over here. This is your flush over here. This is your flush water. So you want to fill this with a bit of water and the pink rinse which is available at um, most retail stores. Super cheap, um, RV Supercenter, Burnsco and so on. Your toilet, this is how you pull out your toilet. So you want to lift this handle up here and you just want to pull this out and you want to take it to an authorized dump station and dump it over there. This top part will not release if the toilet inside the motorhome is not closed. So that's something to watch out. When we go inside, I'll explain that. And this is your flush level gauge. So this is access to your storage. Push that like so. So there's two accesses, one on this side and one on the other side. So you've got that large storage door over here that's opened by just one of these keys. Lift that up. And you can see here, you've got huge room underneath there. You could fit a lot of things in this particular setup. It's huge. And that's where you fill in your water. Your spare wheel is located underneath here. This spare wheel is only suitable for the front of the camper. You've got duels at the back. So if you do get a flat on one of them at the back, the idea is to drive to the nearest tire shop and get that replaced. So this spare wheel is only for the front. Moving on to the front, when you want to wash your windscreen, there's a step up here you can use just up here. You can stand there and wash the windscreen. It gives you a little bit more access. Your road user charges and everything else is located on this side. So here at the front, you have to open that door to fill your diesel. So remember it's diesel only on these um, 
temperaments or motorhomes. Over here is where your set of tools are. So you can either use a coin or a key. All you do is just turn this. Turn that like so. And then you want to grab this and gently pull that. That reveals the jack and the tools. Remember, you can only do the front wheels on this. And when you're done with the tools, if you ever do need it, slot it in there like so. And just push it and turn that, that lock set there. Step is located here. It's a manual step and you just pull it out. Always make sure to put that back in before driving off. Your hub ometer is normally located here at the back so you just need to refer to that and your road user charges at the front fresh water is filled over here again access through that key the house door keys are these two gold ones they're marked gold stepping inside here main control center is over here a small wardrobe with, where the awning pole is normally kept with the two dining poles. Your ladder is kept in here and it's just clipped in. So always make sure you push it in there in the clips. You've got your radio at the back here, TV. So that media switch over there controls the TV. This TV pulls out if you need to. So it's just on a swing out bracket like so. Remotes normally situated up there or in one of the drawers, like here. You've got DVD and USB on this thing. Um, so that's fairly straightforward to use. I don't need to cover that. When you're done with the TV, make sure you push that away. Push that into the lock position and keep it in the lock position. The radio, if you want to use that, you just turn on the radio switch here. And you can turn this on and use the USB and the radio and stuff like that. The remote's up there for that. We'll turn that off, we don't need that. Tank monitors are up here. Diesel heater. All you literally do is just turn it to the on position and the diesel heater will do its thing and cycle on and off automatically. So let that run for about two to three minutes. Once it starts up, then you can dial it down to whatever temperature you want. But we don't need that right now, so we'll turn this off. Even when you turn it off, it'll still cycle because it has to cool off. So it'll take about three to four minutes to go off. Access to the front cabin area. And a large over cab looting area. And that's where your six berth comes into play. So you've got two beds up there, two here, and two people can sleep at the back there. So this is what this looks like when there's no table in here. It gives you a large open space and when you want to convert this into a bed, you just literally just pull this out, lift up and pull it out. And then this leg just drops down. Drops down like so. Similarly on this side as well. It just pulls out. And then these top squabs over here just go down here and that converts into your bed. Underneath here is your house battery, battery charger, diesel heater, and on your fuses and circuit breakers over there underneath. You've got a little charger over there, 12 volt socket. You can plug in anything you want there. So this is what the rear section looks like. You got your usual large opening windows at the back here, which is famous with the New Zealand built motorhomes. You've got a fridge down here. 
So it's a fridge with a freezer box at the top there. Fridge. If we come onto this side. You've got a thermostat over here. So you can set it to zero if you're not using it. Or you can turn it on if you need to. So that's how you do it over there. Just depends on the type of model fridge you have fitted. So with your fridge, make sure it's in the closed position when you're going to be using it for your when you when you go out camping or when you go out on your trips. And then when you're finished with your trip, make sure you turn this to the vent position. So if I show you underneath here, it'll be it'll make it so clearer. So this is the vent position over here underneath. This is the closed position. So all it does, it just leaves the door open by a couple of millimeters so that mo moisture and mold does not build up in here. When Because after a long trip, you'll have water in the fridge. So you want to vent all of that out and you don't want the fridge to be shut. So always keep it in the vent position and that's what it looks like when it's in the vent position. Show you the fridge as well. So the fridge is fairly efficient and you control it via this thermostat over here. So if you want to turn it off, turn it to zero. And if you want to set it to your desired temperature, um, just set it to whatever you want. This is quite important, this part here that slides. So if, I don't know if you can read that, it says to vent and to lock. So when you're not using the, the motorhomes or after a long trip, you want to slide this to the vent position because you want to leave this fridge a bit open because you don't want moisture to build up there and basically cause mold. So you want to leave the fridge to vent and get rid of all the extra, extra moisture. And that's pretty important, so don't forget to do that. Large galley area, sink. 240 volt microwave and you've got your gas stove over here with it's got a grill at the bottom there and depending on what you have fitted four burners or three burners so we'll turn the range hood switch on over here that turns that on straightforward fridge light water pump so we turned on the gas bottle outside so we'll turn on the water pump and we'll turn on the wa hot water heater when the red light goes off that means it's on sometimes if you have left your motorhome for a few months and you're coming to use the water heater and you're not sure if there's air in the line what I'd suggest is turn on the range hood come here and just light one of these up so you can just check and see if there is gas in the line or if your bottles low So as you saw there, it went off. So that's a safety feature on these um, camper stoves. So what you want to do is light it, hold this knob in for about 10 seconds. There's a little safety isolator just up there near the flame. Once that gets warm, then you can let go and then you can adjust the flame. It's just there in case in a, in a worst case scenario, if the wind blows the flame out, that'll prevent gas from escaping and filling up your motorhome. That just cuts the gas supply. So now we know there's gas in the bottle and there's um, no air in the line. We can shut that off. Now we can see the gas hot water heater is on because that light is dim. If that light comes on as a bright red light, which I'll show you. So if I turn it off, if you see a bright red light, that indicates a fault or it's trying to start. We'll just watch it now. And you should see that go dim, indicating the water heater is switched on. And there you go. I don't know if you heard that noise as well. That click is the relay switching on the igniter. So we'll wait and see. And when that light goes off and it goes to a light red amber, not this bright red, then we know it's on. And now we know it's on. Here's your voltmeter. So you keep an eye on that. If It's got a solar panel on the top, so it keeps it constantly topped up. But if it drops below 11, if it drops below 12, realistically, you, you can start up the engine so that it charges up the battery. LED lights everywhere. So if we turn on the light switch here, you've got multiple switches. This is one circuit. 
this is the second circuit and the third one down here is for your light outside here so that's where your light is outside that's what that third switch is there for your rear lights are controlled over here Moving on to the bathroom area over here. That's what that looks like. There's the toilet, which I referred to earlier. See how it's closed at the moment? If it's open like so, that cassette will not release. So always make sure to close it. Close it while driving and close it while not using it. It's always a good habit. This flush will work just by pushing it. It's an automatic push button flush. So you normally want to have the toilet switch on. Or the water pump switch on depending on what model you're in. Close that and shut that off. Your sink just drops down. Just pull it and it drops down. If you have a little water here, don't worry. When you tip it up there, there's a little drain there. It drains it off. And this is adjustable. So this, this just goes up and down. So you can pull this down here when you're using the sink and then put it back up there when you're using the shower. The shower head is also adjustable. So you just pull this or push this. At the moment it's on a tap mode. When you want to go shower mode, just pull this like so. See how it's come out. And when you're finished and when you use the tap, just push it in like so. And your main control is over there. You've got a vent over there at the top as well. And you've got a couple more skylights here and at the top there as well. And you get plenty of storage on this model. Large opening cupboards everywhere. You've got a little charger over there, 12 volt socket. You can plug in anything you want there. And your isolator switches down here. Again, like I said, there's plenty of storage on this model. There's even space for all your plates, all cutouts and everything. This, I'll put the table in here so you can have a look at what that looks like with the table in place. This is what the table is. It's a large table with just two mounts there. And it goes in like so over there. And that's what that looks like underneath. So looking at it at a different angle. That's what that table looks like. So you also have a wardrobe over here. Small mini wardrobe. Where you can hang your clothes. And stuff like that. And more storage at the top there. And we'll just quickly step outside and I'll show you what the awning looks like. So as mentioned earlier, your awning pulls over here. Pull that out. So this is what that awning looks like when it's pulled out. It's quite a nifty design. So no poles or anything to worry about putting down. So that's what that looks like. When you're driving, you make sure you turn everything off over here. Everything should be off apart from the fridge. The fridge is the only thing that can stay on. 
everything else must go off including the gas bottle has to be closed and that's very important to remember that now here coming to the front depending on what model you have um, you either have this uh, touchscreen system here or you won't um, just depends on what was fitted um, as an optional extra so with your key here on this particular model you just put it in here that is position one where the radio and everything comes up position two is when the ignition lights and the glow plugs and everything get activated normally leave it for about eight to ten seconds in the morning just so the glow plugs activate and with your foot on the brake um, all you have to do is literally just turn that once and it starts up your headlights are located over here so this is your park lights and this is your low beam and when you want to go to high beam you've got to come around to this side the stock over here this controls your wipers and your high beam indicator so all we need to do is if i pull this down so you can see it just push and that activates your high beam for the wipers just turn it and that turns on the wipers and when you want your sprinklers just push in so all you have to do is literally just push in like so and that activates your sprinklers this i'll turn this off so you can hear me this over here is your limiter and cruise control so when you want cruise control you just pull so pull back once so say you're driving at 50 kilometers an hour just pull back once that will activate cruise control and you'll notice your speed will come up on the dash to adjust the speed up and down you either go up or down and to cancel you just push back again i'll put the ignition on so you can see the limiter so now the limiter is off there so when the light's not on it's off when you push it and that orange light illuminates that means it's activated so it activates from whatever speed so say you're traveling at 40 kilometers an hour and you don't want to exceed that when you're at 40 all you do is just push that and that activates the limiter and that switches on so that's straightforward uh it shifts just like a normal automatic car so you just put your foot on the brake and you can put it in reverse that'll activate the camera if you have that fitted neutral and then you can put it in drive well, if you want to shift it manually then you can basically put in drive and then just go left to shift down right to shift up and if you're in the manual mode and you want to go um, back to drive all you do is just keep pushing this until you come to drive so coming to the main control center over here these are your just your um adjusters for your different modes so your front um, blower vent lower upper that's all fairly straightforward this is recirculation So when you want your AC to recirculate, you just push the AC and then you push that to recirculate. This is your fan speed. And this is your heater controller over here. Your cigarette lighter socket is over here. You, know, you can use it to charge your phones and stuff like that. So you've got one here. This one is switched through ignition. And you've got another one down there, but be careful of that one because that's um, permanent power. So if you plug something in there and you forget it, you will kill your battery. So keep that in mind. That's quite important to know. If you got this particular type of um, head unit fitted as an extra, you can basically connect it to your phone. Um, so you can hotspot your phone data to this for navigation. Or if you're at home, you can um, basically get your Wi-Fi um, system. So all you do is hit that. And you go through there and um, run your wi-fi for your navigation system you have to initially connect up to your phone hotspot or a wi-fi signal in order for it for this to initially load i've got another video on how to download offline maps and stuff like that but if you've got one of the new latest smartphones um, usually the smartphones are a bit quicker than this but if you didn't want to use the navigation system all you have to do is connect this up so i'll just quickly show you this so all you do is pull down there go there Hold this there, and that goes to Wi-Fi. So you want to turn on Wi-Fi and you want to connect it up to either your hotspot, your own home internet, or something similar, or public Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, 
and uh, when you have internet this will all load like i said and then you can initially start using it but you would want to download the offline maps which you can see in my other video the rest of it is fairly straightforward um you can play around with the bluetooth and all that that's quite self-explanatory apart from that um there's just the tools in this section here that we have to cover in the front cabin so just over here we've got our factory mercedes tools and hydraulic jack over here so that's just something to keep in mind um so that's to allow you to access the spare wheel at the back you need these tools um in order to jack up the vehicle safely so another thing um you've got these buttons over here it just allows you to scroll through the different settings and stuff i won't cover all of that in detail um that's not really too important then um, if you want to go in depth on what all of that is just refer to the mercedes menu which is normally stored in your glove box over there so that's what that is your mirror adjuster is over here you can only adjust the top bit of your mirrors through here your blind spot is manually adjusted so once you set that you leave it it's permanently set left and right straightforward this is your headlight dip switch so it allows you to set the angle at which your headlights uh, point on the road so the higher it is um you just basically want to try to keep it low so you don't blind oncoming motors and finally coming on to this side you might notice this red light over here that red light is basically when you're plugged into power if you forget to unplug that'll uh, emit a loud buzzing noise just to warn you that you're still plugged into power and that you need to disconnect others you'll rip the lead off at the campsite or if you're plugged in at home or similar so that basically covers everything here at the front like i said if you have any questions or if you're not sure of anything just refer to that manual over there it's quite good it's very in-depth it's got a lot of information um, that'll simplify a lot of things and also one last thing if you in case you're curious this is just a paper clip holder so you can just put your papers underneath here you can put your checklist underneath here so you just make sure that the power leads out um, you have steps and all your outdoor chairs and stuff like that it's a nice place to keep it so i hope this video was of some help to you this was just a quick reference guide any questions, normally um, you can refer to the Mercedes manual over there or the user manual, which will be provided to you on handover. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya. Also, always take note of where your fire extinguisher is kept. That's quite important. You always want to remember that. So sometimes when you use the freshwater tap over here, You heard the pump turn off now. If for some reason when you shut this off here and that doesn't turn off, that means there's air in the line, just bleed out. Just open the tap and let all the air come out until you hear that shut off. So the water pump should always shut off as soon as you close the tap over here. And make sure to come to an authorized dump station refer to the manual and you can check and inter on the internet where these are located and at information places around New Zealand where the dump stations are located put the two tabs down take your waste hose open up your dump station lid Come here and open up your valve underneath and your water will start to flow out. This is just for demonstration purposes, the tank is already empty. So once it's empty, you close the valve underneath, undo these two levers here, take this out, lift your pipe up like that. So all the water, if there is any, comes up. Make sure to not forget to put the dust cover back on. Put it on and 
push these two levers down with your other hand. Make sure the toilet is closed inside the cabin before doing this. Yeah, if, if the toilet lid is not closed, the cassette will not eject. And to empty it, you turn this out, open this cap here, keep the cap at the side, and you lift the cassette up and you dump it. And you dump out. To make it go faster, you can push on this yellow button here. And then you can take some water, if there's a tap around here, and just put some more water in here. And then just give it a shake, gently. Shake it all around and then dump it again. You can do this three or four times to clean the toilet. And then just fill it up once you're done with a little bit of water at the bottom. You can close the cap. Now it's indicating a fault. So this system will keep trying to light. It'll do it about three to four times. Um, if it's unsuccessful in all those scenarios, then it'll immediately default to just a red light. So, if you... so when that red light is off, that means the ignition on the gas boiler is on so another way to check it is we'll go outside if you listen closely you can hear it running so if you just gently move your hand up and down here you'll feel the heat coming out and there's quite a bit of heat at the moment so you know that's on at the moment now sometimes with these suburban type water heaters it's quite easy for the wind to go in here and actually blow off the flame so in that scenario you want to turn the camper around so it's not facing the wind they're quite straightforward so if, say for instance that red light keeps coming on and stays on there's several reasons why that could be happening number one check the gas bottle just make sure it's got gas in the bottle secondly it's those valves at the back what i pointed out in the gas compartment make sure they're all on the on position thirdly um check your voltage sometimes if your battery your house battery is below 11 volts realistically it shouldn't be below 12 volts but if it does drop below that you will not get a proper ignition and the gas hot water heater will not ignite so basically if that red light comes on then that indicates a fault and you want to run through all the possible scenarios